watch. Do you think that they would give us this is what we click on so we could Are we ready? I'm born that way. Mike check. You're not born that way or you've been in here all the time. Hang on, hang on, hang on. One, two, testes. Testes. One, two, testes. One. Here we go. Quiet. Kent, you're on. Hi, everybody. Kent Barnes here from Explore Scientific. Welcome to today's Amazon live broadcast. Today is on the wing. I'm sitting here going through a bird book right now, and I'm looking at the white eyed parakeet and the green parakeet parakeets that are in North America. But the green parakeet map on the parakeet on this page of the map shows them a very, very, very southern tip of Texas and down into the eastern coast of Mexico. Uh, parakeets are just beautiful birds. Now you don't want Let's go to, to okay, to other birds. We're in the vireos now, yellow-throated vireo, uh, eastern United States, the red-eyed vireo, eastern two-thirds of the United States. If you want to start doing birding, then you need a bird book. Just like this bird book right here, it is the National Geograph Geographic Field Guide to North American Birds. Hey, Noah, can you get the... Uh, Monitor up for me, please. Yep. This is the field guide to North American birds. It's over in the carousel here on Amazon Live. You can pick one up. It's got a great price on it. It's a great way to start bird watching. It's this is the bird book I use. Uh, there's other bird books out there as well, but this is the one I use. I have one in my desk and then one in my camping trailer. So when I go camping, I've got a handy reference. What I like about this bird book is it has tabs on the outside of it that goes... Uh, Sandpipers, gulls, hawks, flycatchers, titmouses, no, thrushes, can't see because of the light, uh, warblers and sparrows, it has great maps, it has a great index in the front, the pictures are paintings, here we go right here, these are paintings to show exemplars of what the perfect one looks like, a lot of times you get birds that don't quite look like the pictures, if they're just pictures, each one's an individual, these are generic of each exemplars of each species uh, helps you identify the birds as well. So, a very great book. Pick it up over here in the carousel right now. If you're interested in birding, this is a great way to start. Going out and looking at birds is one thing, but the whole pleasure I get out of is identifying that bird, knowing I've seen that bird. And there's birds I can identify on site, as probably you can too. But the difference between a green rumped warbler and a a common yellow throat. Well, you know, it's names of birds and you can look them up and find out. Pick yourself up a bird book over today in the carousel and it's got a great price. Uh, this is under $20 and it's going to be Amazon eligible. So a couple, a couple of other items I want to talk about before we jump in to the main thrust and that's going to be binoculars. This is a headlamp from National Geographic. It has a bright 500 lumen um, and I'm not going to, there, that's how bright it is. A 500 lumen light on it that then dims down and then, oh, turn it off, there we go. It dims down to a dimmer one, then it comes down here to the wide illumination, gets dimmer as well, and then goes into a red light. So if you want to use it for astronomy or protecting night vision, you can do that. But you're like, Kent, I'd have to go through all four of those lights to get to the red light, that would ruin my night vision. Well, yeah, that would be true, except that if you hold it down, it just comes on straight to the red light. There we go. 
ready to go if you want to do astronomy or otherwise preserve your night vision. It comes with a handy dandy magnet on the end. The charger is magnetic and you know it'll stick to, to metal. My head's not any metal in it. Don't know why I'm doing that. My knee has metal in it but it won't stick to my knee either. Uh, but the charger is magnetic, sticks to it, it charges with a USB charger. comes with this handy head strap right here that you can put it on and then great for speed locking, great, great for working on your car engine if you're out by the side of the road and having to work or if you're looking for something in the grass or just doing anything that you need a little bit more light on. You can do it here, get it set to where you need it and it's a fantastic device uh, for helping you out. Additionally, there we go. Looking at myself over there in the monitor. Yes, and I might do the whole show with this song. No, not going to. Uh, I will, because Paul said don't, I think I'll just do that. No, I won't. It'll mess up. Give me, give me lamp head with the strap on it. So, it also, because it's a magnet, you can stick it up on something like hood of a car or anything metal. Huh. Back it up. Oh, there we go, right here. Put it right here. Is that there we go. Very bright for its, for the small uh, size. It is extremely bright. Uh, that's what I like about it. It's got a great light. When you need light, you got a lot of light from this thing. Uh, got a great headlamp. You can see how it turns. So uh, it'll fit any application you need. And again, because of the magnet here, if you're working on something that's got metal around it, you can stick it to it and uh, don't need a third hand anymore, whatever that metal is, becomes your third hand when it sticks to it, so you can aim it where you want to. This is the headlamp from National Geographic. It's over in the carousel right now, shown as the featured product, pro uh, featured uh, item right now. This is a great affordable item. Uh, I've got some in my, what, one of my desks. This is the one from my desk uh, that I use. I've got them, uh, each, each of my vehicles, I've got one. Um, in uh, my travel trailer, use them all the time. These are great devices. Uh, why am I talking about them on a birding show? Well, when you do birding, a lot of times you want to be out there when the birds wake up, and as soon as the, the sun gets up, birds start moving a little bit, and you want to be out there when the world wakes up. And this will help you get to the spot without having uh, to stumble around in the dark. One other item we're going to talk about that we haven't talked about on the show much is the National Geographic trekking poles. These are, comes as a two pole set and as you can see it has a great handle on it, real easy uh, ways to set it to the height you need it. I'm going to go with about right there. That's probably not quite tall enough. We'll go about right there. I like to have mine. That's a little bit lower than I like it. Makes it really easy to adjust the height that you like it right there. And that's really comfortable for me. It has a hand strap on it so you can strap it onto your hand so it doesn't get away from you. And what else? This is a... Uh, these are my personal ones. If you notice here, give a close up here, Paul. On the tip, you're going to see that these are dirty up here. They're not dirty because they came from the factory that way. These are dirty because they've been out trekking with me on hiking trails. Uh, it comes with a nice titanium tip right here. It comes with a nice titanium tip right here. You can see, see the mud. The my other one's dirtier. There we go. has a titanium tip that has good bite. Titanium tip with a good bite to it so it'll grip in the ground. I'm going to show you some other attachments for different applications right here. These are, and here's the connectors. Let me show you how these work. You can set the tension on these so if you need them a little bit tighter, you can tighten it down a little bit. It makes it harder to snap down. You can put another screw on them. Huh? Well, if it's too hard, you can loosen them up. And there you go. If it's too hard, you can't do it. That's okay. Loosen up just a wee bit. And there you go. And in this handy carrying case, I also have the tips that go on these trekking poles. I'm just going to drop that over there. Here's a shot of the tips. I'll show you each one of these in my hand here. There we go. So we're looking at a little booty. So if uh, this goes on, and these literally just snap in right on to the end of the pole just like that. That's a little boot for uh, slick rocks. Here is a tip 
like a cane tip if you're inside on carpet or a you know nice wax floor you don't want this edge titanium tip chipping up the floor you could go to that use it indoors if you're in mud you can put this on this has a screw on attachment to it and this is for mud help you navigate in mud a little bit and then the last one are snow baskets right here and this screws on just like that and this will screw in there so it won't come off and you now have a snow basket actually these don't screw on just that one screwed on you now have a snow basket and I have that upside down just realized that's why it wouldn't screw on there we go now you have a snow basket on your trekking poles just like that so when you got snow you're out there and these won't just stab down through the snow these will help support distribute your weight a little bit and just like a snowshoe or a ski pole All right ski poles have baskets just like this uh, my wife really likes them uh, she's not real stable when she's out hiking and just not comfortable afoot and she likes the the comfort and confidence it gives her when she's navigating, you know, steep slopes that uh, she's scared of heights, basically, is what the issue becomes. And uh, gives her a really good confidence to be uh, uh, more steady and to, to nimble over, scramble over rocks and down some steep stair steps and things like that. This is the Trekkie Poles from National Geographic, a fine device. And, you know, it's getting to be the end of sep middle of September already, and you need to be thinking about Christmas. And if you've got an outdoors person who loves to go hiking, needs a headlamp, trekking poles, right here, great Christmas presents. You can be the hero gift giver this year uh, when you uh, um, uh, are shopping. Be thinking about going over and getting a set of trekking poles right now. Great price, really solid and sturdy. We'll make a great pre Christmas present for anybody who works in the outdoors or enjoys being in the outdoors uh, very well. So think about those items for some great Christmas presents. Get them now while they're in stock. Look, just like last Christmas, if you wait till the last minute, you're probably not going to get your gift. You need to be thinking about your Christmas, sir? Overseas shipping. Overseas shipping is still, you know, in disarray. Uh, rail strike is looming, although it looks like that may have, may have been a uh, ended, we shall see, but you know, uh, one little thing can cause disruption. Get your Christmas presents now and where better than right here on Amazon Live while you're watching On the Wing. So here we go. You're out there. I see there's some people watching. Uh, would love for you to give me a shout out, say howdy, uh, hello, uh, whatever greeting you want to offer. I love to see who's watching and give you a thank you as well. If you're watching us for the first time or haven't done yet before, Click that follow button so you can get notified of our great content we have Monday through Friday. Tomorrow we'll be doing focus on astrophotography. Monday is an educational program, How Do You Know? Tuesday is, uh, lack of a better name, they've not come up with a name for it, I'm aware of. Fun Day Tuesday where Annie and Lucy talk about STEM toys and educational things that we sell. Wednesday is First Light Chronicles and that brings us up to today's show, Thursday on the wing. All right, so now for the uh, big part of birding, <coughs> because that's what this show's about. For the big part of birding, there's Annie. Hi, Annie. Want to come say hi to on the wingers? On the wingers? Does my hair, my hair Your hair looks fine. It looks, oh, always looks, like, looks fine. No, it doesn't. Wait a minute. It was straight. I look like a clown. Did you, did you get electrocuted? Yeah. I or did. a bad shot? Because your hair's curly again. It was straight. Well, look in the camera and tell everybody hi, Annie. Hi. So, anyway. What are you going to do next week on your Fun Day Tuesday show? You know yet? Hey, you missed. Yeah, we didn't have one this week. Annie was tied up doing a bunch of stuff. And by the time she realized it was showtime, it was uh, showtime. <laughs> it was literally five minutes before I was supposed to So what do, you, what do you talk about on your shows a lot? Toys, right? <laughs> What's your favorite thing to talk about during the Fun Day uh, Tuesday? My, my favorite thing to talk about on Fun Day Tuesday is the elect, electric stem. Is the electric stem. 
Yeah, okay, the, 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 the electric, sets. electric sets teach wiring and circuitry, yes, and so much you fun. make lights spin and all sorts of stuff, Yeah, right? it's a lot of fun. Okay. It's a lot of but fun. But you also focus on some younger toys, too, right? Yeah, we have some things. We have some smaller things for uh, younger ages, like um, the Explore Hut. So we have some stuff for, like, three and three and up, you know. And so, um, of course, we have a nature habitat that is a land and water habitat that's really fun. Um, we have, oh, I love the LED. I think you've shown that. The LED light and oh, yes, screen. Yes. We had a two year old come in here the other day and I showed that to her and she loved it. She thought that was a lot and of fun. The fun board? Yes, and the fun board. We we actually, I, my son and I just went on a long trip. Um, we carried that around with us and um, and so he had that as well, along with an iPad as well, especially when you're flying. So sometimes you need something. But, and, um, and the cool thing about that is if batteries run dead, you can still use it for a drawing well, board. Well, I and... thought that. No, it turns out that's not I right. was sorely mistaken. I've been able to do it with no battery charge. Well, that's you still have battery. Oh, it just wasn't enough to charge it just, up. It's just a not enough to turn on the, the screen oh, so you works. can still draw on it. So, like, I just recharged ours recently because I couldn't even delete the pictures. Right. Um, and so I just recharged it recently, and um, it's going to be going for another six months probably. Cool. Oh, it's a long time. It's a long, long time. Oh. Like, I haven't charged so, that months and months and months. So and Tuesdays months. at 6 o'clock, uh, 3 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. In six, the morning? It's 6 o'clock somewhere when we do the show. So it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, central time, right? Fun day Tuesday, or as you call it. Mm. What are you, what's your name for the I show? I don't know. Fun day Tuesday. He All calls right. it fun day Tuesday. I don't know. All right. Thanks, Annie. Uh -huh. All right. So back to the topic of this show. That was a teaser for next week's show. Binoculars. This is a pair of, they're called Kids Specialized 6x21 Binoculars. They're only kids' binoculars because they're made smaller. The pupil and interpupillary distance is closer together to account for kids' eyes being closer together. I can use these binoculars with no trouble, just like this. I always take my glasses off. And actually, it's outside of my interpupillary distance. I have to turn them in a fairly significant amount. So these are going to work for lots and lots of adults, too. I advocate picking up a pair of these over in the carousel, not just for the kid that in your life or kids in your life, but a pair for you too. Go out bird watching with your kids. Teach them the joy of looking at the beauty of birds and hearing the songbirds glorious songs while you're looking at them. And it's cool to go out and use the same pair of binoculars the kids using. You can go out with a more expensive pair of binoculars. But how cool is it to go out and spend time with a kid using the same exact equipment they're using? When I was growing up fishing, my dad realized real early that one of our good friends was kids were using, you know, the real small kids' short rods to go fishing. And they were, we, he, we were struggling to catch fish. Well, dad started getting us full-sized adult gear, and we thought we were uptown because we were using full-sized adult gear. I remember one time early on, Dad tried to use our fishing rods, and, you know, it didn't work. Well, this is a little bit different because those things were toys. These aren't toys. Glass elements, metal body, big, generous focusing knob, really twist well and passes the twist test. If you twist them and that hinge point goes... Now, you don't want to go all Tyler Bowman, one of the customer service people here, and grab them and try and twist them in, too, because, look, you can break anything if you work hard enough at it or strong enough. And Tyler's pretty strong. He actually broke these. He popped this cap off. What did we do? We put the prism back in, got it lined up, glued the lens, the eyepiece back on. So what do the numbers mean? Six. Six power eyepieces, 21 millimeter objective lenses. So that tells you how much power and how much light's going to come in these binoculars. These are fantastic binoculars right here. What makes them real binoculars, not toy, has a diopter on it. Let you focus for your left eye. <laughs> and I always cover up because when you squint, it changes the shape of this eye. So I'm always looking with both eyes open, get it focused, and then switch to the diopter and turn the diopter and get it focused. Now both of your eyes, and this is like all good binoculars, both eyes are in good focus for each eye because our eyes focus differently. Your brain relaxes, doesn't have to work as hard. The kids specialized 6x21 binoculars from Bresser, a great package right here. Had a good close friend came in and bought a uh, microscope or a magnifying glass and those binoculars for her 10-year-old grandson. She said all the toys he got, everything he got, he loved the binoculars and loved the magnifying glass. Inexpensive yet really entertaining. Kids love them. All right, so moving on.
because we're going to be running out of time here real quick. This is the National Geographic 8x42 binoculars. These binoculars are above 4.5 star reviews here on Amazon. A great pair of binoculars to start out your journey if you don't start out with those 6x21 kids. A great way to start out. These have twist up eye cups. Remember what the numbers mean, 8 by 42. 8 means the eyepieces are 8 power magnification. Makes you look 8 times closer than you are. Uh, and 42 millimeters, a generous 42 millimeters of light gathering capacity. Uh, the bigger the hole, the more light comes in. Significantly more light comes into those kids 6 by 21s But these are a bigger pair of binoculars too, right? All right, so these are uh, water resistant. They're not waterproof. They're not purged. Great entry-level pair of binoculars. They pass the twist test with flying colors. We sell a ton of these over uh, on uh, through Amazon. Uh, it's one of our Noah, one of our best-selling items by volume. Yeah, yeah. one of our best-selling items by volume on Amazon, sir. It's in the top five. It's in the top five. That's impressive, right there. We sell a bunch of these and they move out. There's a reason we sell them, and there's a reason we give good reviews on them because these are great binoculars for the money. These are the National Geographic 8x42 binoculars over in the carousel right now, shown as the featured item. If you're out there watching, give us a shout out, please. Uh, if you give us a follow, we'll give you a shout out right back. Uh, there we go. We'll give you a shout out right back. Uh, and there we go. You can see the nice, big, generous exit pupil uh, that makes it easy to find. That makes it easy to find right here. Right there, makes it easy to find. And on the back side, we have the uh, objective side you can see right there. Now, huh? we're going to move on to what's going to be our last pair of binoculars. Which ones do I want to go with? Let's go with another inexpensive pair. These are the Magnaview 8 by 25 binoculars. Now, these binoculars are really compact. You notice they're real small. Right here, got some video running. There we go. Did it finish up? Oh, there it goes. There it goes. All right, so, you know, these are nice binoculars. They fit in your hand really well. They fit in my shirt pocket with no trouble. They're waterproof. They're fully multi-coated. And what that means is... There is are every glass, every surface of glass where light goes through, whether it's the glass lenses inside or the prism, are coated with uh, special coatings that enhance the brightness and sharpness and keeps the light all lined. Paul? It did. It just quit because that wasn't the end. We know what the end looks like, and that wasn't it. All right, so these are 8 by 25. Remember, we were just talking about this. The first number is how powerful is how powerful the eyepieces are. The eyepiece, these eyepieces are 8 power micro, micro, mm, eyepieces that I can try to say 8 power microscopes, 8 power eyepieces, which yields magnification of 8x. It's like you're 8 times closer than you are. So if you're 80 feet away, it's going to be like you're 10 feet away, is how the math supposedly works, and basically works. Over here is a 30, to, excuse me, 25 millimeter objective lens, a little bit bigger than those kids' specialized binoculars. These have a much farther interpupillary distance. The interpupillary distance right here is much more than those kids' specialized binoculars. That's what makes these fully adult binoculars. But as you can see, they compact down really tight. Now, there's, there's a, a keepers right here to run a neck strap through. We haven't done it. But as you can see, it's no big deal for me to put these right here in my pocket and go on down the road with them and talk about something else or go hiking. Now, speaking of my shirt, if you look over in the carousel right now, you can pick up one of these shirts in the carousel. I wear them all the time. Uh, love this shirt, nice, loose, vented back. Uh, I like loose fitting shirts, and this is a nice, cool shirt. We had some logos put on them, so uh, they get customized for us here, but the same shirt's over there without the logo, of course, in the carousel right now. If you just go over there and scroll through, you can buy one of these Habit brand shirts. So there we go. 
That's the binoculars. I got one more pair I can show you real quick. This is Director Paul's favorite pair of binocular. It's the only ones he can see through. He can look through these with both eyes just barely because Paul's eyes are almost on the side of his head. His inner pupil area distance is about five feet. I'm only exaggerating just a little bit, wee bit. They're not really five feet. These are the Alpen Teton 8x42s with the Abbey Prism. The Abbey Prism is a very uh, different kind of prism than, uh, than the other binoculars. It allows for really good bright light transmission throughout. These are fully coated and they're waterproof. The 10x42s are in the carousel, not the 8x42s. No, oh, the 8x42s okay, are in the carousel, but you know what? You can go over to the Amazon Explore Scientific store on Amazon right now if you're interested in the 8x42s and pick those up. What's the difference? One has a little bit more magnification. That's all. Uh, they have the same great uh, optics. They have the same great uh, fully multi-coated pieces of glass. They have the Abbey prisms. They have more light. Oh. The 8x42s. They're both 42s, but as you increase the magnification, less light goes to your eye. So these are going to be a little bit brighter. Everything's a trade-off in optics, whether it's binoculars or rifle scopes or spotting scopes. Everything's a trade-off. If you want more light or want more magnification uh, with the same diameter of objective, you're going to have to, you know, uh, deal with a little bit darker, right? If you go with um, a bigger diameter, you increase weight, but you get more power. You know, you can get up in some really big binoculars that you have to have a tripod for. You know, super big objective lenses, a lot of magnification, but those are very, very hard to hold. Now, this is a rugged pair of binoculars right here. I'm surprised Paul hadn't been running this video. Paul's got some video over there he's going to run, I fully suspect. Hello, Mike Overacker. Nice to see you uh, commenting here on the Amazon Live broadcast. So, again, 8x42 Alpen Teton binoculars with the Abbey Prisms. These have a magnesium body, uh, very robust, very rugged. Now, this is not a light pair of binoculars. The glass in there adds significant weight to these binoculars. But, boy, these things are robust and fantastic. And when you look at them, gee, many Christmas. They're just astoundingly bright. I'm going to focus over on a, a Noah's computer. I'm going to cover up my right eye, so I'm just focusing with my left eye. And there we go. I'm going to pass focus, coming back to it. That's in focus. Now I'm going to cover up my left eye, and I'm going to turn the diopter. Got to get my fingers on it, figure out which way it wants to turn. And now I'm just going to rotate it until I get it as sharp as I can get it. And there we go. Now they're in focus with both eyes. The benefit of that is... Your eyes are relaxed, your brain is relaxed, and when your eyes and brain relax and you're looking through something, you see more. You can look longer, you can see more with your eyes when you're looking through these Alpen Teton 8x42 binoculars. So, come with uh, standard uh, covers for the objective side and the eyepiece side, the ocular side. The ocular side uh, will connect to the lens straps so that you can uh, keep them uh, attached to the uh, neck strap that comes with it. Now this neck strap is, I did not grab it, it's big, nice, wide, soft, stretchy, comfortable neoprene. Great for a day with it around your neck. It's got no non-stick or low skid, so it'll set on your shoulder better if you just have them draped over your shoulder. A really nice addition versus the old hard plastic quarter inch thick binoculars I grew up using. That's what they had, but they've gone to much better design on those neck straps with these Alpen binoculars. Makes for a great day of film. And that brings us just about to the end of the show. Uh, if you're out there right now watching, I'd love to get a, give, for you to give a shout out and tell us hello. You're out there. I always love to recognize you and thank you by name or your, at least your Amazon profile name for watching our show. This has been On the Wing. I encourage you to uh, get started in this great hobby. Uh, fall migration is going on right now. Uh, no matter where you live in the United States, birds are flying south. 
uh, and they fly in stages. Some birds leave later than others. Some birds leave earlier than others. But right now is a good time to go out and look at birds that pass through as tourists and not live where you are year-round. It's a great way to see new birds. There's a thing out there, this idea out there called the life list. When you see a new bird, you write it down, note where it was and where it was and what it was, and now that adds to your life list. So you get to be where you start looking at all the birds that you, you see them over and over again, but you start going, oh, there's a bird I haven't seen before. You add it to your life list, um, which is what I've started. Started that back first of the year, and uh, it's easy to pick up a lot of birds. I added a migratory bird uh, last weekend, well, two weekends ago now. Yes, two weekends ago, I added the spotted sandpiper. Uh, it was a single bird. Uh, I was out doing a little bit of kayaking on a lake and saw it on the shore and managed to get a decent enough picture with my smartphone uh, and blow it up enough to where it wasn't terribly pixelated and was able to identify it. I had narrowed it down to a lesser, or excuse me, a solitary sandpiper or the spotted sandpiper. I was going with the spotted. I uh, put it on, posted it uh, onto a forum and asked and found out uh, exactly what it was and why it was and added that to my life list. Time to go, everybody. Appreciate you watching our show here on Amazon Live. Thank you so much. We'll be back tomorrow with Focus on Astrophotography. That's where amateur astronomy is going because uh, light pollution keeps you from seeing the stuff up in the sky, but the camera can see right through it. We'll be talking about that tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Until then, when you join me again, I will still be Kent Martz right here. I'm on the wing. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.